Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT annual members meeting for the financial year ended 30 June 2022. My name is Matt Rady, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the BT Financial Group and the host of today's meeting. Before we begin today, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which we meet, in my case, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to elders both past and present. I also acknowledge and pay respects to those who identify as being Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and recognise the diversity of Indigenous peoples, countries and culture in Australia. As part of Australia's first bank, we acknowledge our role in supporting an inclusive and diverse nation where all our cultural backgrounds are recognised and respected. Today's meeting is designed for you, our members, to provide an update on your fund's key initiatives and if you don't have a financial advisor, provide an update on how your investments may have performed, as well as share some insights on the market outlook for the year ahead. More importantly, this meeting also gives you a chance to ask questions about the topics that matter most to you when it comes to your super. Our meeting today is live from our office here in Barangaroo, Sydney. I'll give a business update as CEO of BT, and you'll also hear from Gay McGrath, Chair of the Trustee Board, and James Kerr, a senior member of our investments team, who will provide an update on investments and markets. James is speaking in place of BT's Chief Investment Officer, Corin Collicott, who is on extended leave and sends his apologies for being unable to be present at this year's meeting. Also joining us today are directors of the trustee board, members of the BT executive team, and representatives of our superannuation fund actuaries and auditors. Many of you have sent through questions ahead of the meeting, and these have helped shape our agenda today. So thanks for sending these through. You can also submit a question at any time during the meeting by following the steps up on your screen now. Just type a question into the text box next to the video screen and click the submit button. If you do submit a question and it isn't answered during this meeting, it might be because we need to make further inquiries. Rest assured your question has been received and will be answered on our annual members meeting webpage on bt.com.au by the end of March. And just a reminder, nothing said in this meeting should be considered financial advice and that questions about your own account or personal circumstances can't be answered in a public meeting like this. But you can contact our customer relations team directly for help. Their number is up on the screen now. We welcome your feedback and your complaints as an opportunity to improve our service and help us put things right. If you'd like to provide feedback, you can call us or contact us via our website. The address is also up on our screen. Now, if you're thinking of taking any action after this meeting, we'd encourage you to first make sure it's right for you based on your personal situation. For those of you who have a financial advisor, they are typically the best point of initial contact for any questions about your super, your investments, and any advice on your super strategy. Now, today's meeting is for more than 740,000 members of the superannuation fund called Retirement Wrap, whose super we manage and is overseen by the trustee, BT Funds Management Limited. BT Funds Management offers a range of superannuation products with different features and characteristics. So while some of what we talk about will be relevant to everyone, some will only be relevant if you're a member of a particular product. And if this is the case, we'll call it out beforehand. This slide shows the products that this meeting covers and gives you some pointers on where you might fit in. If you still aren't sure, just sign into your online account, check the front cover of your annual super statement, give us a call or speak to your financial advisor. Now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Gay McGrath, Chair of the Trustee Board. Gay brings extensive financial services experience to her role as Chair, with more than 27 years in the industry as a Senior Executive and Director in Australia and New Zealand. Welcome Gay. Thank you, Matt. And I'd like to echo Matt's welcome to everyone joining us today for the annual members meeting. Thank you for investing your time in understanding how your super is tracking. 
Today's meeting is ultimately a meeting for you as super fund members. It's an opportunity to find out more about your super and to ask questions of the trustee board and super fund executives. As Matt mentioned, this meeting is for members across several different super products. And I'll let you know when I'm talking about something that is only relevant to some and not to others. Today I'll be speaking about the trustee board, investment performance, the move to Mercer Super for some of our members, and how we've supported members. I'd like to start by introducing the other members of the trustee board. In addition to me, there are five other independent non-executive directors who each bring significant experience and knowledge in financial services to their roles. You can see all of the board members up on the screen now and the roles they play on the Audit, Risk and Compliance and Investments Board Committees. The Trustee Board is ultimately responsible for the sound and prudent management of the superannuation products issued under Retirement Wrap, comprising of BT Super, BT Super for Life, BT Super Invest, BT Panorama Super and BT Protection Plans. In managing your super, we have a legal obligation to always consider the best financial interests of members. We look forward to this meeting as an opportunity to update members and to answer your questions later on. Now, turning to investments and in looking back at the 2022 financial year, the period this meeting covers. It was certainly a year of higher than usual volatility in investment markets. Global issues like increasing inflation, central banks raising interest rates, global supply chain bottlenecks and the war in Ukraine all had a negative impact on share, property and bond markets. Unfortunately, this meant one-year investment returns were much lower in sharp contrast to the high one-year returns many of you experienced in the previous year. Our Head of Asset Allocation, James Kerr, is up next, so I won't go into too much detail about investments and performance, apart from noting there's been some improvement in the first six months of the current year. Now, while I'm covering investment performance, it's important that I also touch on the government's annual performance assessment result for the 2022 financial year. This section only applies to those of you with your super invested in the default My Super Life Stage investment options for BT Super and BT Super for Life. If you were a member of one of these Life Stage investment options, you would have received letters from us about the annual performance assessment. And if your super is invested in other investment options within BT Super or BT Super for Life, or with BT Panorama Super or BT Super Invest, the annual performance assessment doesn't apply to your super. For background, the annual performance assessment for super was announced as part of the Your Future, Your Super package in the 2020 federal budget to help empower members by making it easier to compare and choose a well-performing super fund. Now, like many things in superannuation, the methodology for the annual performance assessment is complex and it won't be helpful to go into too much detail here. It's worth noting, however, that the assessment looks back at investment performance over an eight-year period and applies different benchmarks and weightings to the different assets your super is invested in. It also assesses the administration fees, costs and taxes charged to members based on the last financial year. Despite a large-scale simplification program, which helped deliver two fee reductions to the majority of members, BT's My Super Life Stage Investment Options failed the annual performance assessment in 2022. It was mainly due to some periods of underperformance, particularly in the 2015 and 2022 financial years. I can assure you that the trustee board has taken these failures extremely seriously. 
Since joining the trustee board and becoming chair in July 2021, I've been working with the board and the fund's executive team to assess the causes of these failures and decide on the best course of action. Together, we decided that the best option was to merge BT Super and BT Super for Life, including the Westpac Group Plan, with an external fund to ensure the combined funds had the necessary scale to deliver improved outcomes to you, our members. Over the first half of 2022, the trustee board worked with Matt Rady and his executive team to conduct an extensive review of the Australian superannuation market to identify potential partners. We then invited a short list of super funds to put forward proposals for assessment and comparison. Expressions, expressions of interest came in from a large number of funds. In assessing each of these, the board wanted to make sure the combined group would have a sustainable long-term future for all members. We had to be very confident that the combined fund would provide members with at least equivalent rights to those they had with BT Super and BT Super for Life. And that the success of fund transfer was in the best financial interests of those members. In May 2022, we announced the intended transfer of members in BT Super and BT Super for Life to Mercer Super Trust. If you're a member of one of these, you would have recently received information from us about the transfer. Now, to pro provide a little more detail about Mercer Super, they have more than 40 years experience as a retirement and investment specialist in Australia and a commitment to delivering strong retirement outcomes and supporting members into the future. Their global team of approximately 1,300 investment professionals is well placed to seek out the best investment opportunities in Australia and around the world to help grow and protect member super balances. By being part of Mercer, members will have the potential to benefit in a number of ways. Mercer Super's default investment option, Mercer Smart Path, has achieved returns above the default options median, spanning three, five and seven years for the majority of members. The vast majority of our members will enjoy a fee reduction. Take a look at your recent letter to find out what this means for you. Members will have access to an expanded choice menu for those who want to take control of choosing their own investments, backed by Mercer's access to a diverse range of investment options. An Australian-based team will be available to answer your calls and provide limited advice over the phone. Generally, if members have insurance cover, the amount and cost of any insurance cover held will not change as a result of the transfer. Again, you can find details of what your insurance cover will be in our recent letter about the move to Mercer. As you can imagine, moving some half a million members and their super across from BT to Mercer is a huge undertaking. So both BT and Mercer have had teams of people working on this since May last year, when the announcement was made to make sure that the transfer goes smoothly. I know the team at Mercer are really looking forward to welcoming their new members in April. And our board is confident members will have the opportunity to benefit from improved retirement outcomes as a result of this move. Now I'd like to talk about our platform superannuation products, BT Panorama Super, BT Super Invest, and BT Protection Plans. You might have one of these if your account was set up with the help of an advisor who might also help manage your super on an ongoing basis. Or you may be a member of BT Super Invest where you have chosen your investment mix. This past year, we've continued to focus on ensuring our platform meets the needs of our members and their advisors. We've improved the stability of the platform to minimize any unplanned outages so you can access your account when you need it. In fact, we're very pleased to say that year to date, our platform has been available 99% of the time. 
And we've also invested in significant technology developments to improve the functionality of the platform. One example is changes we've made to make it easier for your advisors and you to view the status of your requests and when they'll be completed, saving you time. Operational efficiency is another key focus for us. We know that during times like the end of the financial year, you or your advisor want important documents, like your annual statement, available to you as soon as possible to help you make financial decisions. So we work hard to ensure that this happens. With all that's been going on in the background, I'm pleased to see that our customer service teams have continued to be there for our members in so many ways, providing help and support when they needed it. One example includes paying out $291 million in insurance claims to help members and their families in times of need. We've also made payments of $22.5 million to BT Super members in BT Super and BT Super for Life who have suffered financial hardship. And the high quality service and support from our phone-based online and social teams saw them nominated for the best large contact centre in the Customer Service Institute of Australia Awards late last year. I'm pleased to share that the head of our contact centre, Helen Crossan, also won Best Contact Centre Manager at the same awards. Congratulations, Helen. For those of you who are moving to Mercer Super, Super in April, I'm pleased to let you know that many of the people at BT who've helped you in the past will be moving to Mercer with you. And if you're one of our platforms-based products, like BT Panorama or BT Superinvest, the trustee board will continue to be here to look out for your best financial interests, and our customer service teams will continue to uphold their high standards and be there when you need them. That's all for me from now, but I'll be back later in the meeting to answer your questions so it's back over to Matt to introduce our next speaker. Thanks very much, Gay. It's now time to hear from our second speaker, James Kerr, who's Head of Asset Allocation at BT. James has been working in the investment space for over 17 years. He joined BT in 2007 after roles at St George Private Bank, where he focused on equity portfolios, strategy and advice and developing strategic portfolio reviews for private banking clients. James is currently responsible for delivering on the investment objectives for all of the BT investment solutions, diversified portfolios, and leaving, leading the diversified portfolio management team. Welcome, James. Thank you, Matt, and hi, everyone. Before I start, I'd like to thank you for watching today. It's good to see so many of you taking an active interest in your super. Today, I'll provide an overview of investment markets and the economy for the 2022 financial year, how BT's super investments performed, and share our house view on what's to come over the year ahead. During the last financial year, COVID-19 continued to be a major disruption as China and some European countries reimposed and tightened restrictions to curb the spread of the Delta variant. And as the world economy continued to adjust to the ongoing consequences of the pandemic, it also had to deal with the unexpected and tragic invasion of Ukraine by Russia. This added to an already accelerating inflationary pressures as energy and food costs soared. This war was a catalyst, triggering a higher level of uncertainty across already nervous markets. Despite the uncertainty, consumer demand globally remained resilient. This was supported by, low interest, by the low interest rate environment at the time, which further fueled inflationary trends across most of the developed and emerging market economies. Initially, central banks considered the increase in inflation to be transitory and that it would pass. This is still likely to be the case. However, the impacts from the pandemic have persisted for longer than was expected. This has resulted 
in one of the sharpest and largest increases in interest rates experienced over the past 40 years. Locally, the Australian economy remained resilient over most of the last financial year, mainly on the back of our strong commodity exports, domestic consumer spending, positive business confidence and the housing boom. However, the end of the financial year, inflation accelerated and the RBA shifted its interest rate stance, raising interest rates nine consecutive times, taking the cash rate to 3.35% just earlier this month. This is the highest level since November 2012. We have already seen higher interest rates start to impact the Australian economy, with many leading indicators of economic activity showing signs of softening across the housing market and the consumer and corporate sectors of the economy. As you can see on this slide, investment returns were negative across a broad range of assets globally for the last financial year. It was a period where bond and share investments generated negative returns, reflecting a shift in central bank policies to tighten financial conditions. Broad commodity investments were an exception, however, increasing by more than 40% over the same period. Most commodity markets experienced significant gains over this period, particularly across global energy markets, accelerated by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Investments that are held directly and do not trade on listed market exchanges such as certain types of property and infrastructure assets also outperform strongly over the period. This was in stark contrast to their equivalent listed property assets. Listed real estate trusts, both domestic and international, experienced negative returns similar to shares, given their tendency to correlate with the broader share market during times of market stress. I think it's important to consider the experience of the past two years in the context of the longer term. On this next slide, I've compared the financial year returns for 2021 and 2022 in the grey bars with the 10 year annualised returns, which you can see in the dark blue for both Australian and international shares. You can see that despite the large positive to negative swings between the one year periods, returns over the past 10 years have remained relatively stable at just over 9% per annum for Australian shares and above 11% per annum for international shares. This chart demonstrates the importance of focusing on the longer term and not getting caught up in the short term noise. As mentioned earlier, growth assets such as shares, as demonstrated in the chart, are likely to deliver above inflation returns over your working life. Overall, during the last financial year, we saw the reverse of the pre-COVID regime that is, we experienced high inflation, rising interest rates and geopolitical tensions. These factors combined to drive a sharp correction across nearly all financial assets. We expect these factors to remain key drivers of returns over the coming year. And I'll go into more detail when I talk about our outlook for the coming year. Before I move on to the performance of the BT Super and BT Super for Life, my super investment options, it's important to mention that there are many watching today who have chosen their own investment mix or designed their investment mix with their financial advisor. If you have a financial advisor, I recommend you speaking with them if you haven't already done so about how market events over the last financial year have affected your super returns. If you have chosen your own investment mix, as I mentioned, over the last financial year, most asset classes have had negative returns so it's likely the most investment options invested across a diversified allocation of these assets have had a low to negative return for that year. I'll now cover the performance of the BT Super and BT Super for Life My Super investment options, which many of our super members are invested in. BT My Super products consist of seven different life stage default investment options. Each of these options has a different level of expected risk and return, determined by the decade in which our members were born from the 1940s through to the 2000s. What this means 
is that the returns of each of these investment options will vary. This is because of the differing levels of age appropriate risk taken across growth assets such as shares and property and defensive assets such as fixed interest and cash. As I covered earlier, both growth and defensive assets have delivered differing degrees of negative returns over the last financial year. This means that all our members in the life stage investment options received negative returns for this period. However, for periods two years out to 10 years, all life stage investment options have delivered positive returns. There's no doubt that the last financial year was a tough one for super members. So I understand it's unsettling to see your super account balance fall. But I want to encourage you to think longer term about your super as staying invested and accumulating wealth through time allows you to gradually build retirement savings and weather the short-term volatility. As you can see on this slide, over the last 20 financial years of compulsory superannuation in Australia, there have only been five years of negative returns. The worst of those resulting from the global financial crisis of 2008. So far this financial year, we have experienced large swings in monthly returns for members as global central banks continue to raise interest rates in an effort to bring down inflation. These actions are designed to slow down the economy by lowering demand in order to help reduce the current increases in the price of goods and services. As you can see on this slide here, despite the month on month swings in returns since last June, Returns for growth assets have been largely positive over this period. This is because financial markets are now pricing in the need for central banks to eventually lower interest rates to a more neutral level towards the end of 2023 and into 2024. Before I move on to our views on what the, we expect for the next 12 months or so, I wanted to talk a little about BT's approach to ESG and sustainable investing. Over the 2022 financial year, we continue to work closely with our investment managers to positively influence corporate behaviour with respect to ESG. We directed votes on 105 ESG related contentious resolutions. And along with our investment managers, we voted on over 24,500 proposals across around 1,950 meetings. I'm also pleased to share that we were awarded Rainmaker Information's ESG Leader Rating last year. The ESG Leader Rating is awarded to Australia's best super funds for implementing environmental, social and governance principles to a high standard. Now for our market outlook for 2023. On this slide I've listed what we consider to be the six key investment themes for this coming year that will influence the outcome for investment returns. In particular, the current persistence of high inflation and how central banks will react to this. We also not, have not seen the full impact of higher interest rates yet. These typically happen with a lag of between six to nine months. Geopolitical risks will also be a key focus given the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. A further escalation in the current conflict or other foreseen or unforeseen geopolitical tensions will result in more short-term uncertainty across investment markets. We think China's emergence from its pandemic restrictions will help alleviate some of the global cost pressures going forward and provide some positive support for global growth. Finally, despite the risks of a potential recession towards the end of the year, we believe we're nearing the end of this interest rate hiking cycle in which the Reserve Bank of Australia is targeting a moderate slowdown in the domestic economy. If inflation does not reduce in line with expectations, then the risk of more interest rate hikes and a severe slowdown in the economy is high. After a year of steep market declines, it's important to make sure your super investments remain diversified. This is particularly important because investors often shy away from investing in shares and other growth assets when they see their investments fall. This mentality often means 
they miss out on the subsequent market recovery. For members closer to retirement, higher interest rates have materially improved the expected return outlook for defensive assets such as cash and fixed interest. For our younger members and those still looking to accumulate longer term wealth, share markets will remain volatile in the near term, especially if the economic outlook deteriorates beyond the current expectations. However, in our view, it's important to maintain exposure to growth assets. As history has illustrated, the importance of staying invested in the market and to remain diversified with a long-term view. That's all from me, but I'll be back later to answer your questions during the live Q&A. I'll now hand back to our CEO, Matt Rady, for his business update. Thanks very much, James. Well, it certainly looks like inflation and interest rates will continue to make headlines in the news for some time yet. James's update may have prompted a few more questions for our Q&A panel, so please stay with us to hear more from our team. Now I'd like to provide you with an update on the BT business and share some of the work that's been done to empower more people to achieve their financial goals. Firstly, I'll give you an update on important changes to super regulations that have come into effect this year. I'll then provide an update on the move to MRSA that's happening for some of our members. And lastly, I'll share with you what we're doing to improve the member experience, whether you have an advisor or manage your super yourself. After a significant year of government changes to super in 2021, during this past financial year, the changes were more limited. We did see a focus on improving the retirement outcomes for our members. In July last year, a retirement income covenant was introduced, requiring all super funds to develop a retirement income strategy for their members. The BT retirement income strategy has been designed for you, whether you're considering retirement and planning your future after work, or you've already retired and you're accessing your super today. The strategy aims to support you in maximising your retirement income, managing risks to the sustainability and stability of your income through your retirement, and having some flexible access to your savings during retirement. Now we know that some of you may have an advisor who is working with you on developing a retirement strategy. But if you don't, the BT Retirement Income Strategy can assist you in your retirement journey. You can view the strategy and lots of other helpful information about retirement planning on our Retirement Hub. The web address is up on the screen now. Another change to super rules to support Australians thinking about retirement is the change to the eligibility age of the downsizer scheme. The scheme was previously only available to those over 60, but from January this year, it's been extended to those over the age of 55. So more of you are now able to contribute up to $300,000 from the proceeds of selling your home to your super. And it's been great to see a number of our members using the Downsizer Scheme to contribute to super and boost their retirement savings. Now Gay mentioned earlier all the work the trustee board and the executive team has done to find a new home for some of our super members. I now want to talk a little bit about the process involved for the next couple of months as the transfer takes place and what it means for you as a member. And just a reminder that this transfer to MRSA is only relevant if you are a member of BT Super and BT Super for Life, including the Westpac Group Plan. It is not relevant if you are a member of BT Panorama Super, BT Super Invest or the BT Protection Plans. If your super is moving to MRSA, you will have received a letter from us recently that outlines more details of the transfer and what this will mean for you and your super. Now you probably get loads of letters and emails from different companies saying, please read, this is important. But believe me when I say this letter is important and you should read it because it includes details of things like how your super will be invested, your super fees, and the insurance cover you will hold with your super at MRSA. It also has helpful lists of what you might need to do in preparation for the move, particularly if you are thinking about transactioning or making any changes to your account and where you can find more information. So please read the letter. 
And if you have any questions after reading the letter, take a look at the merger webpage. The address is up on the screen now, or give us a call on 132 135. Andrew Wallace, Managing Director of Personal and Corporate Superannuation, will be on the Q&A panel later in the meeting to answer any of your questions about the move to Mercer. If you haven't received your letter and you have super with BT Super or BT Super for Life, please give us a call. Now, as Gay mentioned, a move of this size with half a million members and their super transferring to a new fund is complex. And there's a lot happening both at BT and at Mercer to ensure this transfer goes smoothly. One important thing to note is that before and after your super transfers to Mercer, there'll be a period from around the 17th of March to the 1st of May where some transactions aren't available. So if you want to make a contribution or a withdrawal from your account, have a think about that and please do it before the 17th of March deadline. There may also be changes to the timing of pension payments for some members, so it's worth checking the letter we sent you to understand what this may mean for you. Now, if you find you have an urgent transaction or need to make a hardship claim during that time, you can call the BT team on 132 135, or after the transfer on the 1st of April, you can call Mercer Super on 1800 682 525, and they'll be happy to help you. These numbers are on our merger page if you need them. Once your super balance has transferred across to Mercer, your old BT account will be closed and you'll receive a final exit statement from us. You'll also receive a welcome letter from Mercer with your new account details explaining how to set up your online account and where to go for more information. Across all of our superannuation products, there have been a number of enhancements for our members. One of those has been the continued development of our virtual assistant, Blue. We've continued to see an increased interaction from our members using Blue, which is an artificial intelligence chatbot available to you 24 seven, equipped to answer simple questions. It can provide step-by-step -step guidance for completing common tasks on your super account, like changing your investments, making contributions, and updating your contact details. We've been really pleased with the take up of Blue, which has had over 350,000 conversations with our members and advisors over the 2021 and 2022 financial year. Now, turning now to the developments for those of you in superannuation products not moving to Mercer as part of the Mercer transition. I'd like to take some, some time to talk to you about the enhancements we're making to our superannuation platform, BT Panorama. Our BT Panorama platform is primarily designed for advisors and their clients to support them in managing investment portfolios, super and insurance. And Panorama is also available to members who may or may not have an advisor to directly manage their super online. Now we're proud to say that BT Panorama won best mobile platform and best client portal by Industry Research House Investment Trends in December 2022 for the fifth consecutive year and BT remains one of Australia's largest platforms providers. If you haven't used the BT Panorama app to view your account, I'd encourage you to download it from the App Store or Google Play. We've also got more information on our website for you to access. Last year, we also introduced our new service request tracker technology for BT Panorama members. This is a terrific new feature, which means you can now easily track your service requests online at any time of day without needing to call us. And another new time saver is the ability for members to update contact details online within your Panorama account. These changes are all about making it as easy as possible for you to manage your super with BT. We also know the importance of having insurance to provide support for you and your loved ones if something happens to you or you can't work due to injury or illness. Now for BT Panorama Super members with an advisor, we've expanded our insurance offering, introducing competitive insurance options from TAL and AIA. Having more choice in your insurance means you have the flexibility to select the most suitable insurance cover to meet your individual needs. And if you choose to take up insurance, you can see the amount of cover alongside your super in the Panorama app. I also want to touch on a communication you'll recently have received from us if you are a BT Super Invest and BT Panorama Super account, or 
if you have a BT protection plan held inside your super. We let you and your advisor know, if you have one, about the successor fund transfer, also known as an SFT, to move our members in these products to Asgard Independence Plan Division 2. This SFT is effectively a transfer of members' benefits from one super fund to another, where members have equivalent rights in respect of their benefits. And it will take place on or around 1 April 2023. Now we want to assure you that this doesn't mean we're moving you to a different super product. Your current benefits, terms and conditions, fees and investments will remain exactly the same after the transfer. This change aligns with our focus of simplifying the administration and oversight of our products and is part of the work we are doing to move a large group of super members to Mercer Super. This SFT consolidates our two remaining super funds, which in turn enables us to operate a more efficient business and enhances outcomes we deliver for you, our members. This change gives the trustee the potential to access greater economies of scale by having all members in a simple super fund. And rest assured, there'll be no impact to your account as a result of this transfer. And one last thing I did want to update you on is the potential sale of the BT platform business by Westpac, which remains an ongoing process. Regardless of whether we may be sold or who owns us, our platforms business is a strong business. We're a platforms market leader with exceptional market share, technology and people. Westpac continues to invest in and improve the service experience of our members and their advisors with the aim of helping more people achieve their financial goals. That wraps up the business update section from me today. So let's welcome the panel and go to our live Q&A. For this evening's Q&A, I'll facilitate the session and I'll also be available to answer questions. I also have a panel of experts in the room with me. Welcome back, great Gay McGrath, Chair of the Trustee Board, and James Kerr, Head of Asset Allocation. And welcome to the panel, Andrew Wallace, Managing Director, Personal and Corporate Superannuation, and Cathy Vincent, Chief Strategy and Product Officer. Also here to take your questions today are our actuaries, David Lewis from PFS Consulting, and Luke Carroll from Willis Towers Watson, as well as our auditors, Craig Cummins and Darren Ross from PWC. Now I can see we've already had quite a few uh, questions submitted prior to this meeting and it's great to see the interest. A quick reminder that you can ask questions live by just typing into the question text box next to your video screen and clicking the submit button. Instructions on how to do this are again up on the screen now. Now to break this Q&A session up, we'll start with questions from BT Super, BT Super for Life and Westpac group plan members. We'll then take questions from members of our platform products, which cover Panorama Super, BT Super for uh, Invest, and BT Protection Plans. Now, if you have more questions about a topic after it's already been covered, please submit them anyway, and we'll answer them at the end of the meeting or publish the answer online in the next four weeks. And just a reminder, if you have any questions about your own personal circumstances, we can't answer those in this forum. Please call our customer relations team during business hours instead if you wish to discuss anything specific to your super account. And if you did pre-submit a question prior to the meeting that related to your personal super account, we have already passed these on to our customer relations team. You should have received an email from us offering help. So let's go to the live Q&A. And the first question is an extension of James's topic around investments. Thanks to those of you who have submitted uh, questions. Our first question comes from a member, Peter. James, what is the investment strategy for 2023 to ensure investment growth? Thanks for your question, Peter. I think um, firstly, it's important to recognise that our investment philosophy considers Successful investment outcomes are a combination of um, systematic, repeatable processes as well as taking a longer term focus. We review our investment strategy on an annual basis. Uh, we take into account the longer term risk and return drivers of different types of investments. 
Uh, but we also consider in that process uh, the shorter term drivers of risk in the marketplace, which could be investor sentiment, investor positioning, the current market environment that we're operating in. When we take a look at that uh, review that we've just completed, uh, we, we do find that in the longer term, returns have significantly improved from where we were this time last year, uh, despite the fact that we've had a, a repricing and a correction in markets through the financial year of 2022. Uh, longer term prospects for members has improved substantially to where we were. We also consider the fact that cash and fixed interest investments have markedly improved over the short and long term. Uh, and that is a benefit for defensive investors. When we look at those factors, uh, and with the fact that we think equities, as mentioned previously in my remarks, still remain a key driver of returns above inflation for our members, a diversified portfolio is still the area that we focus on for positioning our portfolio for both the longer term objectives and to weather the shorter term market volatility uh, that we may face in the, in the next financial year. Thanks very much, James. The next question is also for James, and it comes from a member, Yvonne Marie, and uh, as well as a couple of other members, Wing and Evie. All three of them asked, can we expect improved returns in 2023, and what has caused so much volatility in recent years? Now, you did cover some of this earlier, but perhaps a little expansion. Yes, so I think looking at the last part of the question first, I mean, the, the last few financial years have been remarkably volatile when you consider uh, the prior five years to that period. Uh, we not only had the rise of the, the pandemic and COVID-19, which became a global pandemic, uh, which caused significant disruptions globally across all economies, uh, but we all then also had the follow through, which was government and central bank stimulus measures really designed to weather that storm, uh, prevent mass job losses, uh, and prevent economies from going into a severe recession. A lot of that stimulus traveled through the financial year of 2021, uh, and we saw investment markets uh, so very strong off the back of that stimulus measure. Uh, as we moved into 2022, uh, that stimulus measure started to abate, and we did start to see investment markets uh, start to come off as inflation started to accelerate and we saw central banks start to move interest rates slightly higher. Definitely the catalyst, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in 2022 was the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, that shifted the acceleration higher for inflation and it also changed the mindset of central banks where previously they were experiencing and expected a longer term inflation profile than what was currently being experienced post that March period uh, in 2022. Those significant events drove volatility across the last few financial years. Do we expect that to occur this year? A number of those key drivers are still prevalent in the marketplace at the moment. And so we are cautious for the outlook for super member returns for financial year 2023. Of those key drivers, inflation and interest rates are the key and the far forefront of what investors are considering to be drivers of returns for financial assets, not only this year, but into 2024. We don't think that, and we don't expect, uh, similar returns to what we saw across all assets uh, in 2022 to reoccur in 2023. But however, we do remain cautious over the short term. Thanks very much, James. And we're going to stick with you for the time being, a number of questions on investments. Um, and again, you've covered this a little bit, but I think um, it's come through from a number of members, Ikaterima, Remus and Sirako. Um, all three have asked, why has my super fund underperformed compared to other funds, including industry funds? For positioning for BT Super members, we largely have a, a portfolio that's exposed to listed markets. That's not the case for a lot of industry funds uh, who are our key competitors. Uh, a lot of those funds have a much larger exposure to assets that are unlisted. Uh, and 
as I remembered in my remark, as, as I mentioned in my remarks earlier, uh, there was a large difference in the returns between listed and unlisted assets for the financial year 2022. That primarily drove the difference in performance between BT Super and a number of the key industry funds. It is important, however, to remember that that dynamic actually reversed in 2022. And we saw the reversal of unlisted assets and listed assets in terms of performance. Listed assets over that period strongly outperformed and benefited our members, particularly our younger cohort members, uh, where shares and REITs strongly outperformed unlisted assets. So there was two big swings over those two financial years uh, that we had to contend with. Over the longer term, however, it's important to consider that these assets do remain similar in terms of their dynamics and their fundamentals. And we generally see a similar level of returns out of both listed and unlisted markets over that, year, over that longer term period. Thanks very much, um, James. I think that covers the broader topic of investing, but we have had a number of questions come through on sustainability in particular, and I might pick up one of those now. Uh, Brian has asked a few questions. Firstly, how is BT changing its investment, investment strategy towards sustainable business practices? Thanks for your question, Brian. Uh, firstly, Australian law requires super trustees to act in the best financial interests of its members. Notably also, the super regulator, APRA, ensures regulated funds manage risks and opportunities from changing climate, societal and government trends, in line with other risks that impact super. For BT Super and BT Super for Life investment options, we consider sustainable investment being a key input to our investment philosophy and a key driver of positive long-term member returns. BT Super and BT Super for Life, the process that we involve in terms of sustainability is to consider engagement at the forefront uh, of our investment philosophy. That means we not only rest on our investment managers to perform engagement with companies on our behalf, that align with our key principles, but also where contentious issues might arise, our internal teams will be involved with their investment research partners to engage on those, on those areas with the companies directly. We've also been members of a key industry groups along the way. Since 2021, BT has become a member of the Climate Action 100 group, uh, the investors group on, on climate change, I should say, and also the Actuaries Institute Working Group on Climate Change. Those three industry working groups influence and help influence larger corporates establish a net zero target, as well as uh, additional disclosures to improve uh, their climate impacts for uh, investors. Thanks very much, James. And I think you mentioned the thousands of decisions um, and uh, hundreds of meetings that your team participated in earlier, earlier this afternoon. Brian's second question is a little bit more specific. What steps are taken to divest from investments in fossil fuels and weapons trade? Well, Brian, we, we don't uh, take any steps at this stage to divest from investments in fossil fuels. As I mentioned, our primary process uh, is to engage in those, uh, with companies in those areas uh, to positively influence not only their business models and their, but also their longer term impact on climate change. Where we do have exclusions, uh, we work very closely with our industry uh, research partners to disclose and identify where those companies, and largely they are involved in tobacco, and, uh, and uh, controversial weapons uh, that don't align with our key principles. Uh, and therefore, we will look at an exclusions framework on a case-by-case -case basis. Thanks very much, James. I'm gonna turn now to uh, a new topic, which again is specific for those members that are in BT Super or BT Super for Life. 
and it relates to the annual performance assessment of the BT life stage investment off, um, offerings. Now, our chair, Gay McGrath, covered this earlier. Um, and I might turn to Andrew Wallace, uh, who's managing director of our personal and corporate super business to cover some more specific questions. So the first question uh, is from Clement, and I'll turn to Andrew for this question. Um, what is BT doing about the APA failed result from the 30th of August, 2022? Thanks, Matt. And firstly, I'd just like to welcome from my perspective, a BT Super and BT Super for Life members to the um, presentation and uh, the Q&A session today. I'm really happy to answer your questions as we go through it. From an APA fail perspective, we've really been focused on this for a long period of time. And our strategy has been twofold. Uh, as Gay McGrath outlined earlier and Matt talked through our um, steps going forward, the first strategic move for us is to find the right partner for our members for the longer term. And that's Mercer Super. And we're still on track to deliver that transition on 1 April. It's been a lot of work by a great many people and um, we're still confident that uh, we are on track to complete that move. Um, from a perspective, you know, those great advantages are, as Gay has outlined before, um, superior investment performance over the long term and, and their strong capability, reduced fees uh, and member services that can expand um, the horizons for our members. The second strategic move has really been that focus around investment performance as James has outlined earlier tonight. And in particular, from an APA perspective, it's been about reducing our um, exposure to high risk um, and volatile markets, particularly in the listed property trust and alternative space. And we continue to focus on that going forward um, through to the move to Mercer Super. Thanks very much, Andrew. Now, uh, our next uh, topic turns to perhaps something around more around strategy and, and performance. And we've received some questions on the impact of the move to Mercer. And I shared what I could with you earlier. We will cover some uh, specific questions that have come through though. And again, I'll turn to Andrew Wallace to, to cover these. Richard asks two questions. Firstly, where will the funds be invested when moving uh, with, Mercer, uh, with Mercer, there doesn't seem to be a technology fund. Thanks, Richard. Uh, and I think from your question, it sounds like you're a choice member, but I'll just reiterate for all of our BT Super and Super for Life members, if you're in uh, a default fund, in a My Super fund, uh, you'll move across to the Mercer Smart Path investment options, and it'll be based on your own life stage. And we have worked on mapping the um, BT life stages uh, to the Mercer life stages overall. Now, if you're in a choice fund, uh, we have undertaken a detailed investment mapping to look at uh, investment options that best match your current investment option that you enjoy at the moment. As you can imagine, um, all of the superannuation funds across the country have their own investment option structures that have been put in place over a long period of time. And so therefore we don't have exact matching between the BT Super choice options and the Mercer choice options. So we've enlisted uh, a team of um, independent experts to go through and work out what is the most appropriate investment option for your needs. So for example, you talk about the, um, the uh, tech fund. Now that's the Pendle technology option within our choice options. With our investment mapping, we've identified that the Mercer International Shares option is most closely aligned in terms of strategic objectives and the outcomes that you'd be looking to achieve if you were in a tech fund. And the main reason for that is the Mercer International Shares option is skewed towards tech stocks, um, predominantly in the US and in Europe. Thanks very much, um, uh, Andrew. Richard's second question, is uh, a little more technical. Will we be able to access daily exit prices? Well, the short answer is yes. 
Uh, Mercer price all of their funds on a daily basis, except where uh, a choice fund may be uh, priced uh, less frequently, depending on the nature of that fund. You can access those daily unit prices on Mercer's website or on the online member portal once you become a member and you're uh, um, enabled from that perspective. Thanks, Andrew. We, we've had a live question come through, which I might turn to now. This is from a member, Andrew. Why is the transfer of, uh, to Mercer being done? And is the cost of the transfer being transferred to me? I think I'll cover the first part of that question, which I, our chair, Gay McGrath, talked about earlier in the meeting. Fundamentally, that's about the trustees thinking about the best interest, the best financial interest of members and who is best placed to provide a superannuation offering such as BT Super or BT Super for Life going forward. And the trustees have, have decided on a transfer process to MRSA being in the best financial interest of members. The second part of that question, is the cost of the transfer being uh, transferred to me? I'll turn to Andrew to cover. Thanks, Matt. In terms of the costs of the transfer, uh, that is also not being borne by members that is being borne by the different partners between that move uh, and uh, members are not wearing the costs of that transition. Uh, we have been able to um, uh, look at the transition costs and uh, work through that with MRSA. So um, MRSA will be wearing those costs going forward. Thanks, Andrew. I'm going to stick with you for the moment, Andrew. You're not out of the hot seat yet. Uh, we have another uh, member who's asked the question, Sharon. Will there, be, will there be any changes to the administration fees as part of the move to Mercer Super? Well, thanks for the question, Sharon. And the good news and the short answer is yes. The vast majority of members will be enjoying uh, a, a fee reduction across um, the, the fund. In fact, uh, the fee arrangements were one of the compelling reasons that Mercer was chosen by the trustee in terms of the overall fit uh, going forward. Um, and the, it's important to note, and I'm going to refer to the letter that you got sent, you were sent by us in uh, late January. Your fee arrangements um, are detailed in that letter and it outlines what your current fee arrangements are now and what you'll enjoy um, from a Mercer perspective. So that will be um, detailed at that level. Okay, we have uh, a number of members who've asked the same or similar question. Uh, this one uh, comes from Kushagra, Raina, David and Margaret, who have asked, what is BT doing to improve performance and will the performance of BT improve now that Mercer uh, has taken over the management? Well, it hasn't yet, but it's about to. And so, again, I'll turn uh, to you, Andrew, to answer that question. Thanks, Matt, and thanks for the question. In terms of what is being done to improve performance, I think from a BT perspective, we've covered that side off. What I'd probably like to talk about is uh, why Mercer Super was chosen as a partner, as the new merger um, option from an investments perspective. So firstly, Mercer has passed the APA over the last two years. Um, in terms of their default option, Mercer Smart Path. Secondly, they have enjoyed strong investment um, performance over a long period of time. And when we went through that, that evaluation process, uh, we used independent um, experts to validate that uh, performance um, over the, their funds. More recently, uh, from a super ratings um, perspective in September 2022, the survey that they enlisted showed that more than 88% of SmartPath members benefited from above medium returns over all time uh, periods. And in addition to that, 78% of those members received top quartile returns over three, five and seven years. The second part to uh, the question around Mercer's uh, performance is around their innate capability. Mercer have over 1,300 investment professionals across the globe who are um, managing over 300 billion US, um, of which Mercer is able to enjoy um, that scale and that capability uh, overall. And that just puts us in a different league to what we're able to enjoy at the moment. It is important to note that past performance is not indicative of, of future performance. 
but hopefully that gives you a sense of their track record. Thanks very much, Andrew. Sounds like a really exciting outcome for members. Um, I'm going to keep sticking uh, with you, though, and uh, this, this question is a new question which comes from disclosure that we've made recently um, in our financial statements. Uh, David has asked the question, what is being done at an expenditure level, e.g. executive remuneration, including bonuses, to make up to members for poor performance? Andrew, I'll turn to you to answer questions about the fund base and then I'll turn to our Chair Gay to talk about executive remuneration. Thanks, David. In terms of the fund base, it's something we've been working on over a number of years as a part of our simplification strategy. And Gay touched on this earlier in her speech. Essentially what we've been doing over the last four or five years is moving members from our older um, historic funds into the new BT Super and Super for Life funds. And with each of those migrations, um, those members have been able to enjoy reduced fees with that modernised fund on a single platform. We completed that simplification program in October 2021. And as a result of that, we were also able to provide an additional fee reduction in February last year, where we essentially cut in half the dollar-based administration fee, providing a total benefit of approximately $20 million to our members. So we've been on a journey of that over a long period of time. Thanks very much, Andrew and Gay. Yes, in relation to the second part of your question, the executive remuneration outcomes are overseen by the trustee board. And as part of that process, we do take into account the member outcomes that were achieved in the previous year in determining any bonuses or other remuneration outcomes for those executives. Thanks very much, Gay. Now, the next topic is a more general one uh, around member services and broader uh, products. Um, we will email you after the meeting with links to resources and information about the topics uh, we cover. And remember, if you have a financial advisor, uh, we strongly encourage you to talk to them about uh, your super investments in the first place or call our customer relations team for general questions. Now, the first uh, question is in relation for, to our defined benefit fund. And David asks, Given the membership in the defined benefit super fund is diminishing, has there ever been consideration to providing members with a special dividend? Andrew. Yes, it's a, it's a good question. In terms of defined benefit funds, uh, for our broader uh, membership base, defined benefit funds are a particular type of superannuation fund where the benefits of members are calculated in accordance with a calculation that is held within the trustee for that particular fund. And we run uh, a number of different defined benefit schemes for uh, different employers who have worked with us over time. Um, the short answer to your question is, from um, a defined benefits perspective, there isn't the concept of a dividend, and so we wouldn't be able to provide a special dividend, as you describe, to those members. Essentially what happens is um, the combination of all of those members' benefits uh, as calculated through the um, calculation and the trust deed um, are worked out by an actuary which we partner with and then the actuary determines how much additional money needs to be added to the fund to be able to meet those benefits over time. So it's up to the employer then to be able to top up the fund if that's appropriate or run down any surplus over time so that it's managed. And that um, runs for the life of that fund. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Thanks very much, uh, Andrew. A, a live question has also come through on uh, the Defined Benefit Fund. I'm hoping to turn to you for this question as well. The question is, are all the original guarantees for our Defined Benefit Scheme uh, still applying? For example, the CPI adjustment supported by Westpac. Uh, again, the short answer is that that is correct. All of those preservations and conditions and um, benefits of those defined benefit funds will be maintained by Mercer Super uh, and will be transitioned across. There's no change. Thanks very much for the question, Tim. 
Now we're going to turn our attention to some questions that came through on some of our other investment products, uh, superannuation products relating to our platform business. And we'll cover members uh, that are invested in products such as Panorama Super, BT Super, for, Super Invest, and the BT Protection Plans held inside of Super. Now Lynette is asked the first question, which I covered a little bit in my introduction, um, which, and, and Lynette wants to know uh, details about the sale of BT Panorama Super. Now I mentioned earlier that Westpac has been exploring the sale of uh, the BT Platforms products for some time. Uh, that process is continuing, but I am pleased to say we're nearer to the end of that process than we are uh, to the beginning, and we hope to make an announcement uh, in the next few months. Um, it is a live process, and so I can't go into uh, any more detail on that, but rest assured we will keep you up to date and your advisor up to date with information as soon as we have it to hand. Right, uh, the next question is a live one which comes through from a member, Rod, and it's a very good question because it's quite topical and we've recently sent some communication out to members in relation to this who are in this product set. The question is, why is my account being transferred from the Retirement Wrap Superannuation Fund to the Asgard Independence Plan Division 2 Superannuation Fund on or around 1 April? Now, we did cover this off earlier, but what I will do is I'll get Cathy Vincent, um, who's on our panel, to talk and answer that question. Thanks, Matt. Um, so importantly, um, what we're actually doing is simplifying our superannuation fund structures. What that means to you as a member is it actually has no impact to actually the experience you have with us on the Panorama Super solution. So what we're really seeking to do is actually simplify how we operate, create the opportunities for scale and efficiency for us into the future and for our members. But I will reiterate, there is no impact to your account numbers, your experience, features and functionality and benefits you experience today with BT Panorama. Thanks very much, Cathy. I know uh, the, the name's a mouthful, but as we said before, there's no change to the investment of the superannuation product that you're actually in. The next question um, is a question that is specific to Panorama as well. And Andrew, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about investment markets um, and the Panorama capability. Andrew has asked about the mechanisms in Panorama Super used to overcome global events, as well as Australian inflation, and still maintain high performance in a down market. Kathy. So thanks, Andrew, for the question. Um, Panorama Super is, is quite a unique superannuation product in that within that product, there's not a default investment option. It actually off offers a wide variety of quality investment options across diverse asset classes and risk characteristics. In some way, it works as a department store of different types of investment choices. The types of options available on the platform are managed funds, managed accounts, listed securities, term deposits, and access to annuities. And it's designed in a way to allow the, the construction of a tailored portfolio based on your specific needs, and ordinarily with the help of a financial advisor. Most of the investment options are externally managed, and portfolio and asset decisions by external fund managers is, is really the dominant proportion of the managed funds on the platform, Although I do note that we do have some portfolios or funds on the platform that are actually managed by Advance, which will soon be moving to Mercer. Importantly, all of our members in Panorama Super have their own unique needs and specific investment strategies. And we do encourage contacting your financial advisor to discuss your personal circumstances in terms of constructing an investment strategy that suits your needs. For those that don't have a, a financial advisor, you are able to actually search for an advisor on ASIC's Money Smart website at moneysmart.gov.au. Thanks very much, Cathy. Now we've got a question in relation to member feedback. And Jason has asked a question for the results of exit interviews and exit surveys over the last three financial years, including measures of customer satisfaction, platform satisfaction, return rate satisfaction, 
and fee satisfaction. Cathy. Thanks for your question, Jason. I think it's really important in terms of um, capturing member feedback and it's absolutely a core focus of ours. We don't in fact actually do that via exit surveys, but we do do it in other ways. And we importantly focus on capturing that feedback so we can actually set and focus on continuous improvement and enhancement for our members. We do that in a variety of ways. So we have post-call surveys with our customer relations team. We capture feedback through our advisor community. There's some 6,000 advisors that actually work with our members on Panorama and capture satisfaction surveys through um, net promoter scores and in the moment feedback from our customers. Another important area that we really apply focus to is, is member complaints. And we actually construct implementation plans around continuous improvement based on the feedback we receive. The types of examples that actually Matt mentioned previously in his business update are those types of features around up the ability to update contact details online, the ability to actually track your requests and service activity online, and ongoing improvement in terms of the Panel application and mobile app, where we've added um, additional fee information, benchmark information, attending to actually your feedback around what you want to see from us. Thanks very much, Cathy. Now, another topic uh, over recent years which has been quite uh, of interest is a topic around crypto. And we have a few questions in relation to crypto. The first question has actually two parts and comes from William. Firstly, and I think we'll get James to cover this, Firstly, are there any links with the investment streams with either direct or indirect connections to Bitcoin or crypto? James. Thanks for the question, William. I think it's important to recognise that cryptocurrencies are currently highly volatile and speculative investments, uh, and they're not currently regulated like other financial assets. And so uh, we do tend to not refer those types of products to anything that's got a governance framework from the BT platform. As that is said, the trustee at the moment does not add, has not added, I should say, a, a crypto fund or any linked crypto asset to the, to the menu available to, uh, for investors. Uh, and at this stage, there's no, um, no plan to do so. Thanks very much, uh, James. And, and the second part of William's question, and I guess, I'm guessing that William uh, is, is not a keen crypto investor. Uh, can insurance be taken out to cover potential data breaches and siphoning of funds or ID theft? Perhaps I'll cover the first of those questions or the second of those questions. So firstly, no, insurance can't be taken out unfortunately for members uh, for these factors, but BT and Westpac do take fraud and customer data extremely seriously. We have robust systems and controls to protect your investments and customer information, and we do have bank grade security infrastructure that includes SMS two-factor authentication and extended validation certificates to protect information. Personal information is encrypted and protected from access by security. Uh, questions and we also conduct ethical hacks by an internal team to identify uh, security vulnerabilities. We have intrusion prevention systems and web application firewalls which provide multi layers of defence and our cyber security team continually monitor and test to ensure our systems interactions are safe and secure. In addition to that, our external auditors review our controls and ensure they align with international and regulatory standards. Right, turning now uh, to a question around uh, expenditure disclosure. And these questions have come through uh, because for the first time we showed fund expenditure on uh, our annual member meeting invite. That is a new requirement to include a summary of fund expenses and our expenses relate to our super fund as a whole. Some expenses previously reported elsewhere, such as executive remuneration, um, we have covered in previous years. However, some are new. And I'll ask Gay McGrath, our trustee, to help answer some of the questions that have come through as a consequence. A member Steve has asked two questions. Firstly, 
how is it possible to spend nearly $250 million on related parties? Gay. Thank you for your question, Steve. One important piece of context is to understand that the trustee BT Funds Management is part of the Westpac Group. The trustee itself doesn't have any employees other than the directors on the board. So we need to rely on other parties to manage and administer the fund on our behalf and we engage them through contracts. We have chosen to do that with related parties where we've gone through a competitive process to benchmark the services they provide and the fees that they charge for those services. So we make sure that what they are doing meets what is required from an arm's length competitive process and we have ongoing benchmarking. In terms of the $250 million, if you think about the total context of $73 billion worth of assets that the trustee oversees and nearly 700,000 members, it does sound like a large amount of money, but that's important context. The vast majority of the $250 million is spent on investment management charges as well as administration charges. Thanks very much, Gay. Uh, Steve's uh, second part to that question are, uh, what are the audits on these activities? So payments from the fund are audited as part of the accounts auditing process, which is done by our external auditor, PwC. Thanks very much, Gay. The next two questions come from John and are of similar in nature around expenditure disclosure. Uh, the first question is when will fund promotional materials, advertising development and media costs, sponsorship and alliance par partnership arrangements cease? Uh, I'll turn to Gay for that one. So John, I think you are referring to the 4.7 million that is disclosed in the notice around these activities. So firstly, we don't have any sponsorship activities. What we have is marketing and other promotional activities for our members. And a large part of that is the material we provide on our website that enables members to get access to important information to help them in planning for their retirement. We get many visits to our retirement hub where people can come in and do calculations about how much money do they think they might need in their retirement. And they can plan out how they save in their superannuation fund to generate that amount of income. So we find that there's a lot of engagement around investing in these sorts of tools for our members, and we intend to continue to provide those for members. And uh, thank you very much, Gay. And uh, John's second part or second question was, how many people received the remuneration expenditure? So the remuneration expenditure that is disclosed on the website covers 22 executive officers who are all employees of the Westpac Group and their payment is paid by the Westpac Group and is not paid by the Super Fund. The other people covered are the members of the trustee board, the six members of the trustee board, and their fees are paid by the entities being BT Funds Management and Westpac Securities Administration Services, and again, are not charged separately to the superannuation fund. Thank you very much, Gay. I think that wraps up uh, the questions we have today because unfortunately we're almost out of time. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's submitted questions and it's been great to hear what's on your mind and I hope our responses have been helpful. I'd also like to thank all of our speakers and the trustee board for being here to provide an update and answer your questions. Now towards the end of next month we'll publish the video of today's meeting together with the minutes and all of the questions and answers on our website answers to any questions that weren't covered today because we needed to either make further inquiries or we didn't get time will also be included here. We'll send you a uh, follow-up email after today with a short feedback survey. Please take the time to let us know what you thought about today's meeting, what you liked and where we can improve for next time. Finally, I wanted to say thank you to each of you on behalf of the whole team for trusting us with your retirement savings. We're passionate about super and we value the opportunity that you've given us to be there with you throughout your working life and into retirement. Enjoy your evening.